he distinguishes Bilotti, and he says, a referendum cannot owe a political debt to a corporation, seek to curry favor with a corporation, or fear the corporation's retaliation. So Stevens is very clear, okay, let them speak out in referendum, but that's not going to corrupt the political process, the electoral process. And so he makes this big distinction between referenda and supporting candidates by corporations. Um, in any event, Rehnquist even opposed that part, even opposed uh, pro allowing corporations to speak out in referenda. Another major, what I think one of the most illogical aspects of the Kennedy opinion in Citizens United, it's, uh, it's so bizarre. I mean, I can't understand how a, a, a justice, justice of the Supreme Court could come to this conclusion. Uh, it gets a little complicated, but what he says is, well, media corporations like New York Times or NBC, they can speak out on candidates. They can endorse, New York Times can endorse candidates. Fox News can endorse candidates. Washington Post can endorse candidates. Wall Street Journal. And you know what? He, he says, and these are all corporations. These media are all co in corporate form. Therefore, I mean, the syllogism just doesn't make any sense. Basically, what he's saying is, um, <clears throat> so long as, it's sort of the following syllogism. The First Amendment protects freedom of the press, and we all agree to that. In the First Amendment, Congress shall make no laws abridging the freedom of the press. So he makes that point. Then he says, much of the press is now operated by corporations. Okay? Therefore, and this is his illogical jump, the Constitution protects the speech of corporations. I mean, it stretches the limits of logic. I mean, it just makes no sense. I mean, there used to be, a, 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 you know, logic, uh, the philosophers used to talk about what was the, what was the illogical thing. Um, Finland has lots of storks, and Finland has a high birth rate. Therefore, storks must bring babies. <laughs> that was a syllogism that, was being, that was, would be knocked down by the philosophers. It seems to me this is the same thing that Kennedy is saying in Citizens United. Since media corporations have First Amendment rights, which they do, and their, and their corporations, all corporations have that. And it's like throwing out the baby with the bathwater. Either we're going to throw out the rights of media corporations if, to, to restrict business corporations, or we're going to let the, the, the tail wag the dog. The tail being media corporate, we're going to wag the dog of for-profit corporations in general. So I find that one of the most illogical uh, and unsettling aspects of Citizens United. And yet five members of the United States Supreme Court um, come to that conclusion. The next thing is the court dealing with what are called independent expenditures. Now, this is something of a problem because it was a distinction that was made way back in Buckley versus Vallejo. Never made sense then, it still doesn't make any sense. The notion is, and in Buckley versus Vallejo, what the Supreme Court ruled was you can for Congress can forbid corporations from giving money to candidates for office because it has the it, it has the possibility of corruption. It looks like you're buying the candidate or the appearance of corruption. But then the court says independent expenditures are different. An independent expenditure is basically George Soros can go out and spend two million dollars to support Barack Obama if he wants to. And he doesn't coordinate with anybody he can buy his own ads in the newspaper. He can put out whatever he wants by radio time and make speeches. He can do that. It's an independent expenditure, and it's his money. And the Supreme Court back in Buckley versus Vallejo decided, without any real justification, that independent expenditures are not corrupting. 
that you can't corrupt a candidate with independent expenditures. As if a candidate is not grateful if, uh, you know, some billionaire goes and spends his money to get him elected to office. They just think, nobody, why should, they, why should that be corrupting? How's that corrupt anybody? <laughs> so anyway, the court then has now in Citizens United taken that notion full steam. And that's why corporations can now make independent expenditures from their treasuries because it's not going to corrupt anybody. If ExxonMobil wants to spend $2 million to denounce some candidate who's supporting cap-and-trade legislation, energy legislation, why is that corrupting? Why should we think that that congressman is going to be frightened into uh, you know, supporting the position of ExxonMobil? So it's another one of these just seems to me unacceptable uh, notions that just have, has no support in, um, uh, in, in reality. Finally, is this whole question of the rights of shareholders and corporations. Um, you know, at least with trade unions, uh, some, in some states, uh, people can be required to if not be a member of the union, pay union dues. Can have a, a clothes shop, a union, a union shop. Now, however, under the law, an unwilling union member is only required to pay that portion of the dues which goes for collective bargaining purposes to help get him a contract. If the union is spending money for political purposes, the union has a right to reimbursal of that portion of the dues he was required to pay, or the membership fee he was supposed to pay. And that's one of the reasons why I think unions and corporations are distinguishable uh, in, the, in these areas, and why I think Austin got it right. You don't have to stop unions from uh, making these kinds of expenditures. However, in the corporate form, the court talks about shareholders are protected. They're protected. How are they protected? First of all, most people don't even know what corporations they're invested in. Who, it's invested by pension fund managers, um, 401ks, uh, some kind of mutual fund. They don't know where their money is. They don't know what, what, what the, the, their, their managers of their portfolios have invested in. They have no idea. And if they found out, what are they supposed to do? Pull their money out of the pension fund? Because they don't want to invest it? I mean, it makes no sense. Uh, shareholders really are totally unprotected uh, from whatever the corporate managers want to do with their funds. And again, that's another point that Justice Stevens makes in his very powerful dissent in uh, Citizens United. So, I mean, this is where we are. Uh, it's, it's a dreadful opinion. Everybody's waiting to see now what's going to happen. Will the next shoe fall? What are the corporations now going to do that they have this Right. I mean, you know, ExxonMobil, they made $40 billion last year. They want to go out and spend a billion dollars on political campaigns by funneling it to some front organization that's go that nobody's even going to know, unless Congress maybe could maybe you can uh, pass some legislation. The one thing the court did uphold in Citizens United was you can have disclosure rules. And now there are a variety of bills in Congress to at least make somebody disclose wh where the money's coming from to pay for these ads that say, you know, that oppose cap and trade and, you know, protect your energy future and, uh, and support the oil companies. Can we make them at least disclose that the money's coming from ExxonMobil? Uh, some people say, well, make the president of ExxonMobil, if he's the major contributor, make the president of the corporation go on television and say, I'm so-and-so president of ExxonMobil, and I, we paid for this ad and we, 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 we approve this message. Maybe you can, you know, maybe some kind of restrictions can be done, but it won't be easy to get these kinds of restraints. There are now dozens of bills now floating around Congress to try to put some kind of restraints on what uh, the corporate community can now do with this new freedom that they have to go out and try to totally uh, corrupt and take over the political process.